Will the members and visitors please rise? The prayer today will be offered by the Reverend Jim Vining of Trinity Episcopal Church in Wauwatosa, guest of Representative Vining. It is on. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good afternoon. I, <laughs> I have the honor of introducing you today to my favorite constituent, my husband, Jim Vining. Jim and I met in seminary back in the year 2000. I met him and was instantly taken by him. I saw him across the room and noticed his artsy glasses, and as somebody with an art degree who has become a professional artist, I thought, well, he looks artsy and fun. He is, in fact, not artsy, but he is fun. Jim is an absolutely brilliant academic. He is a pastor unlike pastors I have ever known. I have learned so much from him about what is right and what is wrong, where is the moral center, how now shall we live and love? Jim and I co-pastored for a while. We were church planters. That means you, we were starting a church from scratch. If you know much about me, you know I'm an Air Force brat. My family is all over the country. My parents are both military brats as well, and Wisconsin is my chosen adult home. My husband and I went to graduate school in Chicagoland. We began our ministry in Akron, Ohio. It was important to us to start a church for people who aren't so into church, for people who left, felt left out by church, hurt by church, injured by church, left behind by church, disenfranchised by church. We started a church for people who weren't so into church. We worked together there and then, another, and then at another church in another city. Then we moved here. And when we moved here, I guess the dream was we would eventually once again pastor together. That dream has changed, and Jim shifted out of the pastorate and um, became a professor. I became a professional photographer, and our life is different. He now serves our church in Wauwatosa whenever possible, and he works full-time as a tenured professor at Governor State University. I am so proud of my husband and the work that he does how much he cares for his students, how hard he fights for his students, how he doesn't just dump information into them, but cares deeply about transformational change in their lives. I am really honored to have him here today. We got the email from the legislature that tells us, um, just don't talk about political rhetoric. And I laughed because as a professor, as an academic, as a scholar, Jim is a, is a rhetorical scholar. He is a professor of rhetoric. He teaches political communication. And I say he has a PhD in words and is an expert on political rhetoric. At our house, one of my favorite things to do, I'd say our th favorite things, but I think it's probably my favorite thing, is to write together. Um, to get his input on what I write so much in this space. And I am incredibly grateful for his partnership. So, I want to introduce you today to my favorite pastor, my favorite professor, my favorite co-writer, my favorite constituent, my best friend, the Reverend Dr. Jim Vining. Thank you. Um, I love you and I'm proud of you. And I guess I need to up my Valentine's Day game. Um, <laughs> Although, I guess, depending on how things go the next couple of days, that may influence that. Um, so, uh, I invite you to join me in prayer, meditation, or reflection. God, numerous religious and philosophical traditions teach us that you are the source of all of the good in the world, the giver of life and goodness to all people and all creation. You are good, and so you do good to those who worship you and to those who do not, to those who pursue justice and righteousness and to those who do not, to those who cheer for the Green Bay Packers and to those who do not. Our great traditions also teach us that humans are called to reflect your goodness, including your gracious, wise, and just rule of the world. The public servants here today are to rule, represent, and legislate for the good of all people. Those who look like them and those who do not, those who think like them and those who do not, those who vote for them and those who do not, and those who cheer for the Green Bay Packers, and I guess those who do not. It is a high calling. It is a difficult calling, a calling with challenges. Sometimes the issues here are remarkably complex and complicated. 
good and bright people disagree on what is the best path forward. For those situations, we ask for your wisdom to get it right and for your mercy when we miss the mark. Sometimes we think only of some of the people. There are certainly individuals and groups who do not have equal access to the levers of power in this building. For these situations, we ask for your eyes and ears to see and hear the people, all the people, especially those who are pushed down and pushed aside by our social and economic systems and therefore the most in need of our attention. Sometimes we simply forget our calling. We forget that we are here for the good of all people. We might be swayed by powerful voices that can punish our votes or reward our votes. We might be swayed by our own fears and insecurities. And we might be swayed by our own lust for power. For those situations, we ask for your mercy and your strength. Help us turn around and to represent and legislate for the good of all people. God, despite our many differences in this room, we all acknowledge the ideals of justice and peace and prosperity. We call out to you as the source of these great ideals and the giver of these gifts to all people. Today, we humbly ask for your wisdom, your mercy, and your strength to go and do likewise. Amen. The Pledge of Allegiance will be